This segment is brought to you by Rice Works, the gourmet brown rice crisp, made with whole grain brown rice with no cholesterol, no gluten, and zero trans fats, which makes it perfect for your healthy diet. I'm thrilled to have back with us again today Shelly Case, registered dietitian and the author of Gluten Free Diet, a resource guide. Welcome, Shelley. Thank you. Now, I'll tell you, I took this book home and was leafing through it since our last visit together, and what a phenomenal resource, not for just people with gluten um, allergies or gluten sensitivities, but somebody like me who perhaps even wants to entertain and eat healthier. Th what a great book. Thank you for sharing this with Thank me. Thank you. So when we're talking about celiac disease, it's overwhelming. I just keep hearing about it. Is the incidence going up with celiac disease in our country? Well, I think yes, there, this is sort of a twofold answer to this question. We know that there's many people that have celiac disease right now that are not diagnosed. In fact, we did that largest study in the world on over 2,700 adults with celiac disease, mm -hmm. and we found that the, the time of delay of diagnosis from when they complained of symptoms to their physician till they finally got the correct diagnosis of celiac disease, it was almost 12 years for adults and one year for children. So there's certainly a delay in diagnosis, and we're now getting a better awareness of celiac disease, and so people are starting to get more people are being diagnosed, so that's why we're hearing more about it. But there was a study that was just done this past July by the Mayo Clinic where they had opportunity to get blood samples from army recruits back in the 50s that they had blood left over from um, whenever they had pooled it for it. and the researchers got a hold of it and tested that blood to see if the persons ha those recruits had celiac disease. Mm -hmm. They age match controlled people now uh, just in the year 2002 I believe it was to, to, to four and they looked at their blood samples and found that actually there was a higher incidence of celiac disease four and a half times more common in the recruits uh, from this era than there was back in the 1950s. Really? So they felt that the disease is definitely increasing. But when they asked the researchers what was the reason, reason why, yeah. they, um, they speculated that it could be due to food processing, uh, the changes in the way wheat is made, or the volume of wheat. When you think of people's diets, you know, they're just, everything is wheat. I mean, we're having bagels, cookies, snack foods, uh, right. breads, uh, pizza, chicken fingers, you right. name it. We're eating a lot more gluten. So we really don't know why, but there are certainly more people being diagnosed with celiac disease. Now, are there other triggers for celiac disease? Well, celiac disease is interesting. It's an inherited autoimmune disease. So you have to have the genetic markers for celiac disease. Mm -hmm. And there are things that can turn the switch on. It's the, the it's like the light bulb. You flick the switch and suddenly it, it turns on and, and when you're eating gluten now you develop the symptoms. We know some of them are puberty, pregnancy, surgery, mm -hmm. uh, a viral or a gastrointestinal infection can suddenly cause the, the disease to turn on. So you could be eating gluten for 40, 50, 60 years and suddenly um, you maybe lose your spouse, you've got a, a, a bacterial infection or a virus or a respiratory infection, a lot of stress and suddenly now you're really? uh, sensitive to gluten. So the message that we tell people is you can develop celiac disease at any age and you need to be watching for it. And it's, it's inherited, right. which means if you have celiac disease, your children, your brothers and sisters should be, uh, parents should be screened for it because it's about 15% of first degree mm. relatives can also have celiac oh disease. Goodness. Okay, so once we have a definitive diagnosis and you talked about last time, a small bile biopsy to get mm -hmm. that. Now we have to live with it. Now, right. when I open my pantry, it can be intimidating. Can you just sort of quickly walk us through some of the things that we need to avoid, foods we need to avoid, and then what we actually can eat? Sure. Right. Well, besides the obvious ones, like breads, pastas, cakes, cookies, mm -hmm. muffins and bagels, gluten can be found in a lot of other interesting things. So, for example, if we're uh, salad dressings, some salad dressings are okay, but this particular brand of salad dressing has a seasoning blend that contains wheat. So you would have to be checking the label. Right. Um, uh, speaking of seasonings, um, regular spices and herbs uh, are fine, they're gluten free, but when they make it into a seasoning blend and you pick up the seasoning powder, it could have wheat starch or wheat flour to, to bind it together. Right. Um, here's some snack foods, for example, uh, potato chips. In this particular potato chip, there is a Worcestershire sauce um, blend, and we have a bottle of Worcestershire sauce which contains malt vinegar. Malt is, is made from barley. Now, not all vinegars have gluten, just malt vinegar. The other vinegars are distilled, even though they come from a gluten-containing grain, they have removed the gluten out of it, but not in malt vinegar. 
Now, Shelley, that's why when we talk about your book, this is such a great resource guide to have just in your kitchen at your ready because you've got it all labeled in there so that we know what are the words we're looking for because they're exactly. big words. They're big words. Yes. Hydrolyzed wheat protein, yes. you know, caramel coloring. What is it safe or not? Yes, and that's so to read a label, you can be informed. You know, because when you pick up a product and you see all those ingredients, these are strange words to people, you know. Exactly. And here's, here's another snack food. Um, now, there's the seasoning blend doesn't have gluten in it, but you can see right here it's got wheat starch in it you know so who would think potato chips you think it's just potatoes exactly. and salt exactly. so that's another one um, soy sauce you think okay I can have rice and I'll put a little soy sauce on there but the soy sauce has uh, water wheat and soybean oh. so some brands of soy sauce are just soy and some are soy and, and wheat together right uh, and you're gonna make a soup Yes. You don't think, well, that's safe. I'll just put a bunch of vegetables and rice in, and that should be okay. These are the, some soup cubes here. And if you look on the soup cubes, they have um, wheat in there. So th you have to get brands that are gluten-free. Right. Um, here, here's one you wouldn't think of. It's licorice. It's just sugar Absolutely. and a bunch of color. Right. But it's 50% wheat flour. Now, you can actually get gluten-free licorice that doesn't have wheat flour in it. And then you think, well, chocolate bar should be okay. It's just chocolate. But in this particular chocolate bar, it has barley malt flavoring in it from the malted oh, milk. See. So some chocolates are okay, some are not. So reading labels is it's, crucial. It's essential. And that's and why I help. And your book is going to help us Detail information. Labels. Exactly. Yeah. And I have foods that are allowed, foods that are not allowed, and then ones you might have to question. So those are just some, I just brought a few examples of things that people might not be aware of. But the good news is there are Thank other heavens, things. Right. Yes. Like, what do we have here? Well, for, we have white rice and brown rice. This is quinoa. And it's very, very healthy. It's, it's very high in protein and other vitamins and minerals. This is some flax that you can grind up, and there's a lot of fiber. Because when you suddenly eliminate whole wheat and all bran right. and all these things you can't have, you need f sources of fiber. So right. that's why flax is so good. And then this is, you can use all your um, legumes, like these are some chickpeas. Uh, and they make many flours and mixes using these different um, grains. You can get pasta. This is quinoa pasta. Yes, which is so important, especially children. I mean, they live on pasta. They yeah. love pasta. They even they have a gluten-free craft dinner type uh, oh, some companies are making. Now, I, I brought along to show you this example about oats because mm -hmm. a lot of people ask about oats. You mentioned wheat, rye, and barley, so what's the deal on oats? Well, here's, here's a, a commercial brand of oats, and they're a healthy, they're high in fiber, but the problem is commercial regular oats are grown on the same fields as uh, wheat, rye, and barley. They often harvest it on the same equipment, process it, and so there will be low levels of wheat, rye, or barley in the regular oats. So um, they're great for everybody, but if you have celiac disease, you cannot have any little bits of wheat, rye, and barley. So there's companies now in Canada, this one here is um, a gluten-free oat um, made from Cream Hill Estates in uh, Montreal. And it's done on dedicated fields. They uh, use dedicated equipment and uh, process it in a dedicated um, plant. So there's no contamination of gluten. So that people with celiac disease could use the, the gluten-free oats, but not the regular commercial oats. Right. And of course, in terms of snacks, because we're on the go, you've got fruits and veggies yep. that we can rely on. But what about the kids? And if they want to have a quick on-the-go kind of snack. Well, if they're running the soccer practice, yes, you know, exactly. and I, I have kids too, and I know it's like, what can we get, right. grab? Well, an obvious one would be things like nuts, and you can even buy the little packages of, you know, nuts that you could put in, or little um, boxes of raisins and things, right. other dried fruits. There's some snack bars there that are made with different nuts and seeds and that, and they're healthy because you need the fiber and, and the iron and protein. There's things you can even get gluten-free pretzels. Uh, so there's all kinds of things. I mean, we, even some of the, you know, the kids would often take Cheerios Absolutely. in the bag. Well, here now you can get Holos. These are made with sorghum and some other grains. Um, so, and there's, you can buy different gluten-free baking mixes and things, so you can make up muffins and, and cookies for, for snacks. And of course, there's lots of great other snack foods like the rice works, yes. uh, brown, gourmet brown rice crisps. Right, and they come in so many different flavors, which I love. So whether it's the cinnamon when you have a little bit I'm craving a sweet, for a sweet tea. Yeah, and I do. <laughs> yes, or the savory, which of course I eat, thanks to Donna Dewar from Mildred's Temple Kitchen, we did a segment um, we've done some segments with her on cooking, and you guys are going to see them soon. And we were able to actually make recipes with rice works, and so they are uh, celiac friendly, which is so important. You crush them up and make the fried chicken. Oh. So you know you have to just rethink about uh, your diet. And and in my book, I have a lot of recipes using all of these healthy whole grains because nutrition is important. Because many of the gluten free products are made with just starch sugar and fat right. uh, and so they don't have a lot of fiber and iron and B vitamins and so that's why it's important to make sure you're choosing healthy snacks that we've Absolutely. talked about and, and the rice works uh, has fiber in the it's made with brown rice and, and no preservatives or flavorings or coloring so it's a, it's a great snack. Well thank you so much and I think we've convinced her to come back yet again so we can talk about how do we you know cook 
um, for celiac disease or even go out to restaurants. So thank you for sharing thank all you. your great information with us. And of course, if you want to get a hold of Shelley's book, you can do so at glutenfreediet.ca. And if you want more information about what we talked about or in some recipes, you can go to riceworks.ca. And our wonderful sponsor, Riceworks, of course, is really stepping up to the plate. And they want to recognize charities, big and small, uh, known or unknown in your community. And they are willing to put some money towards that and potentially have a chance to win up to $30,000 for your charity of choice. But we need you to go on and tell us about your charity. Go to showusyourgoodness.com and tell us about these inspiring stories that you have in the community. And then some lucky charity is going to win some money from Riceworks. So go to showusyourgoodness.com both to put your charity on there and also you've got to make sure you want to vote. And of course if you have any other health and wellness questions don't hesitate to send them my way to Margaret at reallifeonctfs.com.